Knockerheads, it's Karen, and I'm back with another collaboration. This time I'm collabing with Parasol Mushroom, who is another art YouTuber that I really recommend you guys go check out. She does a lot of variety of videos, and I really enjoy her work and her really cool, like, whimsical style. So I really appreciate her ch uh, challenging me and collabing with me. I challenged her to do the complementary colors challenge, so she can only use the two colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel. And she challenged me to do the ballpoint pen challenge, but I can't turn it over. It's upside down ballpoint pen challenge. So it was not easy, <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. Uh, and I hope you guys enjoy. All right, I taped my paper down. I'm ready for this upside down challenge. Uh, the reason I taped my paper down is because typically when I illustrate, I'll be moving the paper around as I get a more comfortable position while I'm working. So, <laughs> uh, I taped it down so I couldn't do that because I would, I would naturally be inclined to rotate the paper as I work. Uh, but this is an upside down challenge, meaning I have to make the ground plane here and the upper areas down here and everything has to be drawn upside down, basically. Uh, I have some ballpoint pens. I have a few blue ones. This one draws in black and this one draws in red. And I think I'm going to sketch with the red one. Uh, so let's just get right into it. I'm not sure exactly what I want to do. Uh, so let's see. So the idea I decided to go with was doing an illustration of my character Taffy from my storybook. Uh, I will be uploading more videos about him in the very near future, so stay tuned for that. Uh, but in this video I wanted to do an illustration of him looking at some flowers, kind of like the one that I have as my little reference, but I wanted him to be sitting in a different pose and looking at a different sort of flower. And I had a really hard time with proportions in this upside down limit. Uh, I initially drew him with a head that was way too small and his legs are too big. Uh, and his legs wind up being too big even in the end of the video, but I did increase the size of his head. Uh, I just really like the proportions I'm using in those little illustrations that I have of him. And I didn't want it to change just because the... <laughs> limitations I have on myself for this video were making it difficult, um, so I had to kind of push past that challenge and, and figure out how to make his proportions a little more true to his design. Um, you'll see me pausing a lot in this video to think about what I'm about to do, and uh, that is definitely an evidence of the struggle. Um, I couldn't think of what kind of flower to draw, uh, so I just looked out my window and drew the first garden plant that I have that I laid eyes on. Uh, I have a lot of mountain lupins growing in my front uh, front, front flower beds and um, they're really pretty and kind of simple so I felt like they would be a very fitting thing to add to this illustration and they wound up being my favorite part of the image when it was all said and done. Um, and right now what I'm doing is filling in Taffy with his dark colored fur. Uh, he's a Dutch rabbit, which is a breed of rabbit that has dark colored hind, la hind legs. <laughs> hind lanes, what? Uh, he has dark colored hind legs and dark colored mask on his face and ears. And uh, he is black and white, but I decided to use the blue so that I could use the black for the darkest areas only. Um, and also be able to incorporate the color in all parts of the image. That way there's unity in the whole piece. I I'm really happy with uh, all things considered with the way that the character looks. Um, there is a point where I ran out of ink on my this blue p ballpoint pen right here on the ear. It's like, oh no, I'm out of ink. So I had to pick up a new pen and keep going. And things slowed down after there because this pen, the new one I was working on, had a much finer nib and it actually made the color turn out lighter uh, than the other uh, pen. Um, so I had to do quite a bit more layering in order to uh, achieve the look I wanted. Um, I will say that that ear that I'm drawing right now, or coloring right now, turns out looking really weird 
when I turned the picture over. You'll see it in a little while. But it, it looked right when I was drawing it upside down, but that's the, that's the pitfalls of limiting yourself to only having your image facing one direction. <laughs> um, but it's, you know, it really shows the merits of turning your page as you're working. Um, it's something that a lot of artists do. It's a great way to see mistakes in your illustration and uh, fix them before you get too far along, like especially in the sketching stage. So that's why I tend to turn my page around a lot when I'm working on an illustration. And I did not realize uh, until about this point in the video when I was working that I was hold keeping my reference upside down. And it actually really helped me to kind of visualize the character. Um, but I didn't really realize that I had left the reference upside down as well as the uh, main image. So I don't know. It was kind of helpful. Um, so for the lupins themselves, I decided to uh, keep going with the blue, um, partly because the flowers themselves are a bluish purple color, um, but also because there was so much blue in taffy that I didn't want to do the plants in black and white. And I think that it, doing a balance of all of the colors all over the image really helped because it would have had too much emphasis on one color um, if I had just done the plants, let's say, in gray or red. Um, but I feel like the whole picture is more tied together because I incorporated the blue and the black and the red in every element of the illustration. Um, there's a point here really soon where I turned it over and realized that I had forgotten one of the focal points of the illustration. So I'm not sure when you'll see that, but I uh, wanted to add a bumblebee because bumblebees love these flowers and I watch them in my garden all the time and I thought it would be a good uh, thing to add to this image because you know I I can I can tell as I've developed this character that he's an appreciator of flowers but I wanted him to be watching something I wanted him to be looking at a, another living creature, and so I wanted to have a bumblebee in there, and I turned over the picture and I was like, look, it's all done! Oh wait, it's not all done, and I had to turn the page back upside down and add in that little bee. But here I am now adding in the black outlines to the lupin, just to, uh, just to unify the illustration a little more. I do feel like there's so much, uh, heavy colors on taffy that he kind of sticks out and isn't quite unified with the plants and they almost look like they're two separate drawings but if I would do it again I would definitely put a little more red and a little more black shading on the flowers themselves but uh, at the same time I did want taffy to stand out so yeah <laughs> um, but I am really happy with this all things considered I did a lot better than I thought I would. Uh, <laughs> it's definitely not my greatest crowning achievement masterpiece illustration or anything like that, but I did have a lot of fun doing it and I hope you guys enjoyed watching me sort of struggle. And uh, I'm going to add a couple bloopers in at the end of the video. Anyway, I hope you guys check out Parasol Mushroom's channel and check out her complimentary colors challenge because it really did turn out great. So thank you so much for watching and I hope you subscribe and stay tuned for more because there are more collabs on the way. Thanks for watching everybody! My kid's just jumping all over the place. <laughs> oh, my pen's drying! Um, and I'm just now realizing I was going to draw some bumblebees and I forgot to, so I'm going to add those. <laughs> I'm going to add those right now.